everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this week's tutorial I'm going to paint a really nice landscape with a bit of everything. Uh, well, most of everything. I promised a viewer, I was promising this viewer for weeks and weeks and weeks that I would paint this. I just now got around to it. So I'm going to do it this week. It's Eileen Donald Castle in Scotland. Did I pronounce that right? I think that's right. It's a beautiful, beautiful landscape and uh, they were asking me for weeks and weeks and I just I had such a build up of requests that I just had to keep putting it off do you know what I mean so this week I'm going to do that next week I'm going to do the three part reflections okay the series on reflections next week I promise there's just one or two things I wanted to show you here now let me just move the camera for a moment this is a beautiful painting I just finished it's on my patreon page a full tutorial um, I just wanted to show you this because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm very happy with the results. So, I'm so it's working with yellows, yellows and browns, and it was just a lovely tutorial um, showing you easy ways of creating dramatic light like this. It really turned out lovely. I'm very, very happy with this. Little people in a boat fishing and the sun going down. Um, that was just what I wanted to show you. So pop over and take a look if you really like to see the tutorial on this. Um, also, let me just put this down here on the chair. I wanted to show you how I varnish my paintings. I have a painting here of Moore Abbey in Cork, here in Ireland. And this is what I finished a long, long time ago. I wanted to show you how I varnish it. So what I basically use is Artist Gloss Varnish. And I bought this in my art supply store. And you can buy it in matte as well, also. I like the gloss, it gives it a little bit of a shine and a bit of a vibrancy. It has a lovely vibrancy to it and it really brings the colours out. Lovely on the painting. I bought this about seven or eight years ago and really that's all I've used. I don't varnish paintings very much but it goes a very, very long way. Basically, just take a brush, any old bristle brush, dip it in and off you go. Now you'll see the colours really come to life as I go down over the primary colours and it really brings out um, the colours and the painting, it really really does, it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic stuff and just one coat of this is absolutely enough, it's loads and this bottle now would probably, you probably get about 20 or 30 paintings from this little bottle, to be honest. It goes a lot a long way, you know, and it's just, you know, if you have a special painting that you really want to keep care of and look after, definitely I would recommend using a varnish. And that's it, done. And you can see now it's really kind of brought out all of those colours. You see, you can see the shine now, but it kind of dulls down after a while as it dries. But you can give it a second one. I missed a couple of spots there now, but in general, you can see how vibrant the colours are. They're really, really rich and vibrant. Um, so yeah, you can varnish your paintings just like that. All right. So look, let's go and let's go and have a bit of fun again. I'm looking forward to this. Some nice reflections and. I picked a nice kind of a dark image. It's not dark, but it's, it's lovely. It has lovely contrasting colours. So get your paints and your brushes and your canvas and let's have a bit of fun with this, okay? This might be a two-part tutorial. I'll see how it goes. I want to take my time. So go on, join me in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. There is the picture. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, there was a couple of different variations of this, paint, of this photograph out there but I kind of I spotted this one it was very eye-catching I thought the colors were very very kind of eye-catching in this so um you know it has lovely earthy colors I don't want to be painting something with very big bright blue skies and very bright reflections I think something kind of dark and earthy like this will stand out much more um you know we can look we can always mess around with some colors but this is this beautiful castle isn't that just gorgeous now I'm going to do a quick sketch just a very very quick sketch of the hills in the distance I suppose it's a good idea to put a horizon line and by that what I mean is where the land meets the water type of thing so I put a very quick horizon line across there 
Um, the castle itself, okay, it sticks up like this. There's a bit of a castle here, a bit of a wall coming up like that. It's quite small, now it's off at a distance, isn't it? But it's just gorgeous, it really, really is. It's a stunning picture, and I love painting pictures like this. They're really eye catching. Uh, the reflection, I'm going to put, I'm going to accentuate the reflections in this as well. So it's not going to be just blue water like it is in the photograph. I'll bring some reflections down also. And let me see, okay, we'll come over to above. Now we have a lovely bridge there, don't we? It's a gorgeous bridge, it's just by the horizon line there. I've been very, very rough with this now, don't take any notice if my pencil marks are very hit and miss. Okay, I'm just being very, very quick. I just want to get a, a kind of a general sense of the picture. Uh, a big tower coming up here. I'll accentuate that a little bit more. Um, there's lots of chimneys and little windows and all that kind of stuff up there. I'll do that last. All right, there we go. And then we've an end piece, which is in shadow there. Uh, with some kind of bushes all along here and I think that's pretty much all we need to do for this now the hills in the background we have a hill lovely hill kind of coming up like that okay and another one coming in like this and these hills are very sort of it's all trees isn't it isn't it it's trees off in the distance and um, we have another big one then which kind of comes along you don't have to be too perfect with these, but I will try to get it somewhat similar to the photograph, okay? Um, I will sketch out some of the kind of the dark points, so I put a little line just like that for some of those dark points. We have a dark point here, and it kind of comes down then into the valley like so, doesn't it? Now we have a lovely crisp kind of a line there. And it disappears. So this is all in darkness. And this is all in darkness as well. So this is going to be a bit of fun, isn't it? And then we have a little one off in the distance. Like that. And another one. Kind of coming down like that. And that will do just fine. That's all we need to do, I think, for the sketching. Nice and simple. Let's not go overboard with detail. Right, my paints, my colours, I have them out here and I'll put them on the screen as well. I have titanium white, Naples yellow, lovely creamy kind of a yellow, cadmium yellow pale hue, I have some burnt cyanide, some burnt umber, I have a little phthalo, a little cobalt blue actually, I have a little crimson, some black and a touch of phthalo blue, only just for some very dark shadows, I might not even need it to be honest. So they're my colours, and just a plain white paper palette, a tearaway palette, uh, and that's it. Now, brushes. You can see a lovely selection of brushes here, lots of different types. All my brushes are th synthetic, and what I mean by synthetic is they're very, very soft. You can even use these for watercolours as well, but they have a little bit of a firmness. Now, this, this is a brand new one, okay? It's firm, it's nice and bouncy, you see? And they're the type of brushes I use. And these are my small, flat, green, stubby brushes. I have these in a set of three. And I love using these brushes. They're fantastic. If you want them, just email me. Um, okay? Synthetics. Also, I want to show you what I do. When, I'm, when you hear me saying, I'm just going to clean my brush, what I'm doing is, I have a little top pretend in a bowl here, okay? When I'm cleaning my brush between colours, I dip it in, once like that I soak the brush and then I'm just rubbing it on tissue paper or paper towel anything you have to hand really well like that taking the color off so I'm not putting it in and swishing it around like this as you would with watercolors or acrylics you don't do that I just dip it in once and I take it out and I give it a good clean on my tissue that gets most of the color out and that's what I'm doing then when I say I'm cleaning my brush in between colors that's all I'm doing okay You'll get used to it after a while. So just a little drop of turpentine. Um, I think this one actually is turpentine substitute. I'm going to try that. Um, it has much less of a smell than 
pure turpentine so it's just fine as well it's, it's pretty much the same thing my canvas is 20 inches by 14 nice landscape a canvas board and I primed it twice and I gave it a very very light coat of sandpaper then okay light rub and it's lovely and smooth so here we go brushes at the ready I'll take my small green stubby brush or any wide flat brush that you have to hand you can see it's starting to display that's perfect for trees for trees trees and bushes it's absolutely brilliant so it's after maybe doing three or four paintings and now it's really coming into the the tree department it's going to be perfect for little trees and all that kind of stuff so that's when it's at, at its best all right when you get them noodle like that it can be annoying to get them to to do what you want to do because they're very soft but they will bulk up after three or four paintings like this and they're fantastic so let's go this is going to be fun nice plain sky on this let me dampen my brush down very gently and take off the excess it's just damp and the color of the sky now it's a lovely subtle sky isn't it i'll take a little there's a little bit of blue on one side so let's make a nice warm blue let's take some cobalt blue and let's take plenty of white and the white now will immediately thicken this up like a paste so what i do then is i just dip the corner of my brush into some turpentine or yeah turpentine or whatever you're using just to soften it a little bit more okay now it's not very runny it's kind of creamy it's nice and soft and creamy there we go and into that i might take a touch of crimson a tiny little touch because it's very very strong that crimson now i'm just making sure you can see everything okay on camera you can and with that color now let's just take a look at this now that might be even a little bit thin for me so i'm going to take a little more blue a touch of the crimson again and a little more white i won't dampen the brush this time i just want to thicken the paint up a little bit more now this is better so i come across just as far as there now i'll clean my brush just like this very quickly to take the bulk off then i'm going to pick up some cobalt blue on its own and i'm going to add some of that across the top just to make it a slight bit more blue if you know what i mean and as it comes out now it's going to get lighter and lighter so i'm going to take some titanium white and start adding titanium white into this as it comes down now i have a lot of blue on my brush we're just going to give it a quick wipe on the tissue just to take some of it off and i'll dampen it very gently again and then take plenty of white so i'm not cleaning my brush completely there's still a tiny tiny bit of blue in that brush and you see it's mixing with the white then which i'm putting on now the paint is still a little bit thick so i'm just dampening my brush ever so gently just with the corner of the brush just to help it flow that little bit better there we go and i'm just flicking it around softening it in and let me dampen my brush a little bit more again take lots of titanium white and i might take a touch more of pink in this make it slightly more on the pink side just for the distance there we are and work that in nice and warm look at that all right so we have a nice subtle color up there now on the left as it comes across it's going to get really really light so i'm going to dampen my brush again very gently take plenty of white and i want this nice and creamy again so i'll take a touch of crimson this time now that's a bit much to see how strong the crimson is so i'll give it a wipe just take some of it off and i'll dampen it very gently again i'm dampening my brush very gently all the time just to help the paint flow and a touch of naples yellow so crimson white with naples yellow and i'm going to soften that across to this side here and then i'm going to soften it into the blue you see i'm pulling the blue now backwards and forwards into that color softening everything nicely together you see nice and gently look at that now that's lovely i love that color so we have a nice light area up on the left up on the right hand side here and let's take a touch more white with some, some crimson again 
Now I've touched the black there with my brush, you see? So I'm going to dip it into my turpentine and give it a good clean on this tissue here. All right? And that'll get the black off. And let's start again. Let's take some white, a touch of the crimson, and let's come over here, add that lovely pink colour just to the right hand side of the, pic the picture. Now the sky in the painting is in, in the photograph is very just plain and kind of blue, but I want to add a little bit of colour to it, okay? That's why I'm adding this little touch of pink here and there. Now wipe the brush again. Let's get lots of white, lots of thick white paint, and come up here and soften that white in around the bottom of that sky there. Look, there we are, look at that. Okay, done. Nice and simple. Now let's add a couple of clouds perhaps, will we? Just one or two floating along. I'm going to take my small stubby brush. Lovely small flat brush. And I'm going to mix a nice shadowy colour first. I'm going to take a little cobalt blue, a little crimson, I'm only mixing a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, okay? So those two colours, and I'm thinking I might take a touch of the black, a tiny, tiny touch of black. And this is going to be the shadow for these clouds. So I'm just going to add some of these across just like this first. Just flicking one or two of them here and there. Off in the distance, you see? I'm just kind of scraping the canvas just along here and there. Um... Let's put one or two, let's put one more, perhaps, just up here, coming into the painting, okay? Now, I'm going to leave that. Clean your brush. So when I say clean my brush now, I'm dipping it into my turpentine once, and I'm rubbing it on my tissue. Look, and do it again if you have to. So I'm basically just picking up turpentine. And now, you see, it's nice and clean already. Then we can go into some bright colour. Let's take some white. Some Naples yellow and a touch of that pink. And with that bright colour, I'm going to just add. Now we need to figure out which direction the light is coming from. So on the photograph, the light is coming from the right hand side, isn't it? So let's put the light on the right hand side of these clouds. Just here and there. Okay? So you can see what I mean. Doesn't that make sense? So all the light is coming from one direction. Let's take a bit more of that colour now. And just brighten them just that little bit more. And I'll maybe add a little touch of bright up here. And you can even put a couple of flicks of colour here and there as well. Just on its own. Look, just some white. Kind of flicking along. Here and there. Way off up in high up in the sky okay and I rub my brush and I put it down and then take a nice soft brush little blender brush nice and soft and very gently soften those together and pull them down into the blue okay nice and gently look at that isn't that lovely and these ones I'll pull at this direction, just gently. And how's that looking? Okay, let's sit back and take a look. All right, I'm happy enough. Nice simple sky. Moving on to our hills. This is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to use my medium stubby brush for the hills, okay? I'll dampen it and I'll give it a good dry on the tissue, make sure there's no colour on this from a previous painting and you can see there's a bit of green on my tissue look so i'm going to give it a good 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 rub now to get all that color off and we have a lovely distant kind of a warm color don't we i'm seeing look at the photograph i can see a bit of crimson let's mix it up here now in this patch here and i can see some burnt umber and i'm going to add to that a touch of naples yellow which will help Soften it and lighten it at the same time. 
and I might start with that colour. I might take a touch of white into this actually. Um, and perhaps a touch of blue. The blue will just help push it off into the distance, okay? Now I'm just trying this. We can change it as we go. Okay, let's just put that one in there. Just very kind of, uh, very quickly. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not too fussy about getting it right first time. Now I've taken a touch of blue and I've made it a little more blue just off in the distance there. All right, there we are. And we have, I can see little bits of shadow here and there, so I might take my small stubby brush and I'm just looking now, I don't know if you want me to zoom in on the, fold, on, on the painting or are you happy enough with the palette on the same screen? I don't know. We'll, um, we'll go as we're going just for now. Let's take a bit of cobalt blue and some crimson. So I have a nice kind of a shadowy colour there. And I might just darken one side of this coming down. Gently. And there's a couple of shadows perhaps on the back of this one as well also. So you can see it's just adding a little just a little shadow here and there, that's all. And let me see now, I might add a touch of black into that. Because this one is quite quite a dark shadow coming down here. Okay. No, I think that's fine. Look, these are very, very far away. You're not going to see much detail with them. Okay, just bear that in mind. They're very, very far. Um, all right, I'm going to take another brush because my medium stubby brush is very splayed out, you see. It's really, really sticking out and I need something with more of an edge on it. So I'm just moving to another flat brush. It's, uh, it's just a regular flat brush size god what size is that i think it's a size a size a size five i think something like that right let's dampen this and get this nice hill done in here we have a nice shadow coming down here so let's take some crimson some blue and when i'm working with shadow colors like this dark colors i generally make a purple first and then i add either brown or black to it so look, I have a nice dark purpley colour there now, okay? And to that, um, I can see the shadow colour is really kind of a bluey, bluey sort of a, a shadow. I might just take a touch of white and a bit more blue. So I'm mo it's more on the blue side. Let's just put that down. Now that's a bit pinky for me. Would you agree? It's a little bit pink. Let's take more blue and let's take a touch of black. That might be more what I am looking for. Let me try this. There, that's better, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. So that comes up here now, doesn't it? And let's just fill it in. I'm working quite thin now, by the way. All these colours are very, very thin. I'm not putting a huge amount of paint on the canvas, I'll be quite completely honest. It's very, very thin. So we have, now it just goes up there, you can see, you can see what I mean. And then it kind of, it turns into a sort of a greeny color here, doesn't it? So I might take into that a touch of Naples yellow. So it's more of a kind of a gray, green kind of a, a, a kind of a tone. And I'm gonna soften them very gently together. Okay, how are we doing? All right, that's not bad. Now I'll go back onto my my bigger brush just to cover more ground. Let's um, hmm, let's kind of bring it across now. These colours are changing, aren't they? I'm going to go back into some crimson, burnt umber, and I'm going to mix a lot of it now this time. Okay, let's mix a good amount of it. 
crimson burnt umber and I'll take a touch of black into that and I'm going to take some white as well now let's just have a look no that's not too bad I'm just filling in the general shapes up here and of course it kind of it changes very quickly as it's going along doesn't it color it really just changed very fast let me just soften some of that together there and I'm going to start adding more Naples yellow into this because it's nice and yellow up at the top isn't it I think it's very bright over on that side so let's take a touch of cadmium yellow with some white I'm mixing all this on the same brush now okay nice and thick lots of thick paint there we are and let's pull that down let's go around the castle so this is just like my base color we'll say let's call it a base color I'll put some shadows on here now very soon and all that kind of stuff but this is just my nice kind of base base color um, okay now it kind of changes to a different color then it's more greeny here isn't it so let's take more cadmium yellow in that and I might take a touch of black so that black with the yellow will give it a, a nice green um, Naples yellow with some black and a touch of blue perhaps I don't want to go into cadmium yellow just yet because that's a very rich bright colour we just get this base colour on here now Naples yellow, little touch of blue cobalt blue that's a nice earthy kind of a colour there fill all this in with that colour, you can see I'm kind of chopping and changing colours as I go along I'm adding as I go cobalt blue, Naples yellow and of course, of course the cobalt blue is very forgiving so you can get away with adding plenty in and it doesn't overpower you see I can add lots of that in and it does not overpower the colour too much whereas phthalo blue or Perusian blue will make a big big dramatic difference in colours now we have a lovely little mountain there okay that's constantly now just kind of glancing back and forth at the picture now it gets nice and dark back here doesn't it so let's go cobalt blue let's take some Naples yellow and a touch of black let's have a look at that there now just for a moment okay let's fill that in I know it's quite kind of bluey at the moment but this will help give it some depth and some distance later on okay don't worry I'll be going back over now most of this in a moment so I'm going to soften that now nicely together there okay you see there now look at that that's nice isn't it so let's sit back now and just have a look see what's what all right that's quite nice I'm fairly happy with that what I'm going to do next is start adding shadows and lights to this highlights and shadows so you can see I was just kind of getting the general color and shape in but now comes the fun part adding some little trees and all that type of stuff lots of little trees so I'm gonna start with this area down here I think I might get a lot of those trees in so for that I'm going to take some with a dry brush now and you can see my this is my tree brush here now okay it's very splayed out you see it's a very very worn brush um, the tip of the brush is really worn and it's perfect it's just a synthetic brush perfect for little trees and stuff off in the distance so look I'm going to zoom in here now for this part and show you nice and close up what I'm doing
that should be better, shouldn't it? And I have my tissue in my hand to give this a rub every now and again. I'm going to take some black, just a dry brush now, some black, little touch of cadmium yellow, and that gives me a very rich dark green with a touch of burnt umber. I may add a touch more blue into this, a touch of cobalt blue as well, look. So I have a very dark rich green, but it's a kind of a bluey green, do you understand? So with your brush loaded up, okay, you can see that. Let's start dabbing the suggestion of rows of little trees coming down the hill, here and there. And I'm only just hardly touching the canvas with this now. And I'm sort of letting the brush dance around. It's like a little dance. The brush is doing its little dance for me now, very kind of spontaneously. But I'm coming down at this angle where the hill is falling in that direction okay and it gets really dark further down doesn't it i might take a bit more in fact you know what i'm going to do now at this stage i'll take a touch of phthalo blue and the phthalo blue now will really add some depth into this there you see now how that's much bluer so that will add real distance and depth into the painting and it gets really dark over here so look i'll just put some of that in over here as well and because this is so far away you you will you will not see much suggestions of trees and things like that so i kind of soften it off into the distance then off over there you see just by dabbing dab 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 and this is only a suggestion you're only telling the viewer that it's just kind of a hill full of kind of trees and all sorts of things off in the distance all right that's all i'm doing if you prefer to go into a lot more detail yourself you absolutely can and that's brilliant but i'm just going to keep it simple for now and we have some kind of over here i might start adding a little touch more cadmium yellow to it the further over we come because of course it's going further and further into the light of the hill so it's going to get brighter and greener as you can see on the photograph okay um couple here i'm just kind of suggesting picking out little parts of the hill and it's kind of quite rocky up on top isn't it so i will put some nice brushwork up there as well so how's this uh, how's this translating now on camera i hope you're able to understand what i'm kind of doing here we have some nice brighter kind of trees over here in the distance and um, i might wipe my brush just quickly Take some cadmium yellow, a little touch of white, and I'm going to take a touch of burnt sienna. So now I'm going into the warmer colours. Now have a look here and see what you think. There, look. Some nice warmer colours off in the distance. And perhaps even add a touch of white into that as well. And I'm just dabbing my brush here and there. And you can even dab it into the darker areas. Also, soften everything together nicely. There, that's quite nice, isn't it? Don't be afraid, just go for it. If it doesn't work out, you can go back over it again. Now, we have some dark stone on the side, don't we? I'm going to take some black, some cadmium yellow, and I'll take a touch of burnt sienna. So again, a rich, warm kind of a green. There we go. Let's just add a little bit of that here and there. On the photograph now, there's a lot more detail 
down at the bottom of the hill but I'm not going to go for lots of detail I'm just going to put in a suggestion of all these little trees off in the distance because I want to create some distance in the painting I don't want to be putting too much detail um, kind of far away because that just kind of brings it closer to you so just by kind of suggesting something off in the distance you're giving it a lot of depth I'm putting a couple of dark ones here and there look a few little dark ones popping up around the place um, okay a couple of darks around there and the hills might be coming down creating little shapes I'll go nice and dark down around the back here. I'll take some black and some blue and that'll be nice and dark. There we go. So this will be a two-part tutorial I reckon. I want to take my time with this and spend a bit of time chatting to all you avid artists out there and subscribers. Let's have a chat. Okay. Let me sit back now and just take a look at how we're getting on. Let me zoom back here so you can see. You missed some of that, did you? Yeah, sure you did. Now, I'm going to add some lights in here. I'm going to just quickly give my brush a quick clean like this. And I'm going to take some cadmium yellow, Naples yellow, and some white. And I'm going to just start adding a little bit of light there and there on some of these trees. I'm just going to soften some lights around here and there. And I'll go again, some nice bright colours. The landscape is just full of trees, isn't it? Off in the distance here. It's just really full of rows and rows and rows of trees. They might add a little light to some of Hmm, let me see some of these perhaps. Just one or two. And we could even go with something a bit more blue for some of these off in the distance. Just a touch here and there, see? No, right I'm going to go to the top of the mountain and I'm going to start putting in with my small stubby brush you can see now yeah you can see fine there now um, up here let's get some nice lights I'm going to take some Naples yellow a touch of cadmium yellow and lots of white and with that I'm going to up there and start putting in some nice highlights on this okay that's a bit yellow for me now let me just take more white and more naples yellow and let's just pull some little ridges and stuff like that down here and there just to simulate some lights okay so let's just imagine there's lots of light coming down catching these. Or a touch of crimson, I think, just to warm it slightly. So as we come farther left, it's going to get slightly and slightly warmer, isn't it? I would say. Like that. 
and we have a couple of nice ones kind of coming down this way again I'm not going for all exact details I just want a, an impression that's all I want a little impression and it gets very pinky here doesn't it so let's take some crimson mix it in with that and take lots of white so I have a kind of a pinky salmon kind of a colour and okay we have this ridge here I'm just going to sharpen that slightly okay and we have a little one that comes down like that and it cuts across slightly doesn't it and it comes kind of down and disappears I'm going to make it disappear off down into the, the trees underneath and okay let's put a little here so I'm just messing around that's all I'm doing messing around with my brush having a bit of fun you can now you can use a knife for this if you like using a palette knife you can absolutely I'm just going to soften this now down into some of those trees soften out the brush strokes a little and then I'm going to take a dark color and put in some nice shadows so nice and soft you see it's disappearing down then isn't it so let's clean the brush dip it in turpentine and give it a good wipe on your tissue and I'm going to take some nice dark color some burnt umber some crimson and some black so I have a nice warm dark colour there now dark already kind of a brown and let's get some nice shadows in on this this will bring it to life um, right we have a nice shadow here let's just add a little shadow there and we have another shadow I'm going to darken and sharpen some of this And we'll pull that down there we go just wiggling the brush side to side and I'm going to add a couple around here okay comes down like that and couple around here so I'm kind of using my own initiative here now as well I'm not going to copy this thing exactly that would be no fun would it let's go about ourselves and let's see if we can make our own interpretation of this lovely painting Oh, this lovely photograph rather and here we go couple up there now I'll soften that again very gently so this is a real um, in-depth tutorial now on hills isn't it okay soften that again sit back and have a look and I think the last step I will do is get a pointy brush and I put in some nice little details with some black and some burnt umber put some nice sharp strong sharp little details here and there and it's just really a series of little marks and jagged lines you see that's really all it is it's nice to do this with, with just a brush every now and again I don't like using palette knives for mountains and things like that too much I think people get too used to using palette knives and they're kind of limiting themselves then you see in the long run I find it's nice to you know stretch out and try different things even if you don't like it you might discover a new way of doing things No, okay you see 
it just kind of draws in the eye that little bit. Perhaps just one or two here. Just on the backs of the ridges. You might have a little shadow, you see? There. I think that's I think that's pretty good. Yes, what do we think? Now I might um I might go in there with some darker greens. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue, some cadmium yellow, and some burnt umber. And I'm just gonna sharpen some of the greens in there. Just add a little bit more um shape to some of them. So you can see now a very bluey kind of a green here, don't I? And I'm just going to pull that right across, um, taking more burnt umber as I go. And I'm going to darken that right over there. And in fact, what I will do then is I'll just dab over some of these with my tree brush, with my very rough worn brush. You see, softening them in. And what I'll do then at that stage is take some phthalo blue with some white. Okay, you can still just check, just checking that you can still see. And I'm going to just pop, add a little touch of very light mistiness off there in the distance. Okay. Now there's a reason I'm doing this, and I'll tell you why. Because the bridge coming across here is very dark so I'm thinking I want something light behind the bridge later on you see so it's not going to work very well if it's dark against dark so I'm just planning ahead now that's what I'm doing Do you understand what I mean there now I'll soften that with my soft brush just very gently and soften it up into the hill as well if you like just a little And I'm going to come over to this side and with my clean brush again, okay, cleaning it again, takes lots of that dark colour, burnt umber, black and phthalo blue. And I'm going to come over here and put in some nice darks because there's really some nice darks over here on this side as well. And I'm working kind of wet into wet now, it's all very wet and I'm not going over it too much because it'll turn into a mess. I just want to capture some darks right over here on this side. There. Okay, that's fine. That'll do. Now. Okay. How are we looking with this? I'm going to sit back and take a quick look now at these hills and see if there's anything which is kind of not particularly right. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm fairly, I'm happy enough with that. I think actually I might lighten the right hand side, what do you think? Let's add some nice uh, soft yellow. Let's take some Naples yellow with lots of white. I'm just feeling some Naples yellow up in those hills. And I think that's a little better. It's kind of sort of catching the sun just that little bit better, isn't it? That for me is just working a little better, I think. Softening everything together nicely. I'll add more Naples yellow as I come down. Sort of coming across into the darker colour, just here and there. There now. Now I think that's probably a little better. So I went into a lot of detail now with this 
tutorial on the hills here you could have just kept it simple with brush strokes and um, keeping everything kind of soft and smooth if you understand what i mean but you know it's nice to kind of go into a bit of effort every now and again more detail sometimes is nice and i'm taking my time so i'm softening now just gently here and there up into the hill because it's all kind of one isn't it it kind of almost disappears up into the hill a little bit here and there you see so you know it just flows much better i think right let me zoom back and let's zoom show you the palette once again so there now how is that that's nice isn't it raise that slightly for you and i think we should move on to our castle yes let's do that i'm going to use this brush and i'm going to paint on a very bright rich color i'm going to take some naples yellow some cadmium yellow okay and i'm going to take some crimson i think i'll try some crimson just for now lots of white and a bit more cadmium yellow in that I want to get a very bright sunlit kind of a colour so the sun is really sort of hitting the castle okay you see what I mean um, a little more crimson I think and more cadmium yellow the cadmium yellow will give it a really bright kind of sunlit colour now that's better there I think that's much better straight line down at the edge I'll fill it in first now with this colour and I can add some darks to it with adding my little details I find that's probably the easiest thing to do um, I'd perhaps take a touch of burnt sienna as well and just soften that in here and there we have another wall that kind of comes out at this side and comes down Um, a touch more crimson. I'm kind of playing around with the colours as well now. Look, you see, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Um, okay, we have some little shadows. I'm going to start adding some burnt umber to this with a touch of crimson. So it's getting kind of warmer, isn't it? And in fact, this one at the front has a lot of um, brown, doesn't it? Let me just show you what I mean. This one here has a lot of brown on it, doesn't it? Now I'll use this to create some texture. A bit of texture on the wall, see? And that's very bright now on camera, but it's not, that, it's not really that bright, I promise. I'm going to take a touch of white and just add a little splash of white here and there like so but the light is really kind of catching it um, now let's go to a dark I'll take my pointy brush and get a nice dark colour some dark burnt umber let's try some burnt umber with a little crimson and this is going to be quite wet now ok so it can move around nicely let's first put on the dark okay um right so i'm kind of looking closely now at the photograph and the dark there it does step out a little here and there a bit more crimson i'm adding nice pinky colors to this now as well and i'm going to soften some of that in here and there this now is just kind of creating a little texture on the wall at the same time. Alright. So you can see what I mean. It's a nice warm colour. Crimson and burnt umber. It's a lovely, lovely combination. And I'm going to darken. Um, let's see now. God, there's lots of detail up in here, isn't there? There's a little bit up there. There's a kind of a shadow being cast from little bits of bobs up around there. This is a 
lot of fun. I love getting into details work like this. I hope you don't mind. 